This is Jen Psaki this afternoon. Ask about President Trump. You know, President Trump has been barred from a lot of social media sites. I'm just curious whether you think his absence has made your job any easier or the White House's job any easier as it kind of goes forward on these COVID negotiations. And Look at, she's smiling. She's like, this is a layup. He would, he would have certain this is going to be fun. Republicans who may be, um, may be more inclined to take a harder position. wonder if that's been anything that you guys have thought about or, or kind of considered. This may be hard to believe. We don't spend a lot of time talking about or thinking about President Trump here, former President Trump, uh, to, to be very clear. Um, <laughs> I think that's a question that's probably more appropriate for Republican members um, who um, are looking for ways to support a bipartisan package. Um, I think it's a more appropriate question for Republican members who are still stuck up. Former President Trump's ass. Uh, and whether that gives them space. But uh, I can't say we miss him on Twitter. Does President Biden support the continuing ban of, of, of President Trump on their sites? I think that's a decision made by Twitter. We've, we've certainly spoken to, and he's spoken to, um, the need for social media platforms to continue to take steps to reduce hate speech. Um, but we don't have more for you on it than that. So over the weekend, we learned a lot about Trump's legal team. And then we also learned that Trump's legal team is abandoning him. So we got George Conway. Um, George Conway, I'll start with on you with, on uh, the president's mm, legal team. Uh, this is Mika, I guess this morning. Now, Trump has hired lawyers now. We're going to talk about them here in just a second because <laughs> they're fun. This is George Conway, husband of Kellyanne, giving his opinion on Trump's legal affairs. Uh, leaving him and him apparently taking on a new one because he wants to argue that he won the election. I don't know how many times you can put your hand on a hot stove before you realize that's probably not a good idea. Um, but what do you make of Donald Trump clinging to this tra strategy? It's classic Donald Trump. I mean, he will, till the day he dies, assert that he won that election, even though he knows he didn't, even though. I don't know that he knows he didn't. I, honest to God, think he probably done some mental gymnastics and he thinks he fucking won it. What do you guys think? Do you think he knows that he didn't win it and he's just lying, a sociopath? Or is he like totally a malignant narcissist and is convinced he fucking won? And in this crazy ass fantasy world, because... Like, I, I keep running into that with Republicans. I think they genuinely believe the batshit crazy things they say. Do you think we're stupid? You think we're fools? All of it. All of it. He's admitted privately that he hasn't. And his instability and his inability to be rational has always caused him difficulty in retaining lawyers it it well, happened conway says he admitted he, he has for counsel and he actually asked me for advice at that time about counsel mm. uh, for the Mueller investigation and it happened it happened again for uh, the impeachment trial uh he did have his in-house uh, white house counsel staff argue some matters but he couldn't get a a a truly good lawyer to argue for him beyond you know beyond that he's always had trouble getting lawyers to represent him for a couple of reasons one is he's not a very good client he doesn't take advice very well he's unpredictable and he doesn't pay his bills so it's not surprising <laughs> that he's had trouble here um, uh, maintaining a uh, council. Uh, it's un not, not surprising that he's asking them to violate their their the rules of professional ethics by making factually unfounded arguments such as that he won the election. And it's actually not surprising that a week before the impeachment trial, he had to go out and find another pair of lawyers. And it's pretty amazing that somebody who supposedly is a billionaire and who was president of the United States has such trouble. I'm glad he said supposedly a billionaire. 
Conway is right. What I don't understand is, okay, so PBS Frontline did this uh, Trump's American Carnage documentary. And uh, they had Frank Luntz, and they, they showed Frank Luntz's like, whole hour-long interview that he did for them separately on YouTube. I watched that earlier today. So, like, George Conway still giving advice to Trump, even though, like, vocal on Twitter against him. Frank Luntz talked all through 2016 about how horrible Trump was, says he left the Republican Party over Trump, is still giving Trump advice up into 2017, 2018. I don't understand. I don't, I don't fucking get it. So let's talk about Trump's new impeachment team. He has hired a couple of new lawyers. South Carolina lawyers Butch Bowers and Deborah Barbier, Barbier, Greg Harris, John Gasser, Josh Howard left the defense team on Saturday. The source said uh, the lawyers left over a difference of opinion on the direction of the defense's argument. The new lawyers announced by Trump, David Soen and Bruce Castor Jr. Castor Jr. was involved in a high-profile race. Also was an attorney uh, representing Bill Cosby. I'm on Fox News, so it doesn't have the... There's a really funny quote. Assured Cosby wouldn't be prosecuted or some shit like that. Let's scroll up here. See if this is the video I think it is here. Should be Chuck Schumer. Come on, Chucky boy. I would simply say to all of my colleagues, make no mistake, there will be a trial and the evidence against the former president be. will be It's going to be next week. I'm looking color. forward to it. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer saying it's full speed ahead with the impeachment trial of Donald Trump, despite a vote this week that strongly suggests it will end in his acquittal. I don't know about that. Just like Chuck said, they're going to present the evidence. And that evidence is pretty fucking damning when you look at it all together. Which ProPublica was awesome enough to do all the research for us. And they have this really neat thing I stumbled across over the weekend. Which is a timeline of all the events from the Capitol laid out. These are the videos from Parlor that were salvaged about the Capitol, all laid out in chronological order. It's amazing. I think it was something like 500 hours of footage that they've archived. The entire fucking thing. And they've, they've even, like, marked the most egregious ones. The woman saying she's going to shoot Nancy Pelosi in the head. Let's see what this fat fuck Forward has Forward as say. hard as we can. While we're pushing forward, they're shooting us with percussion grenades. The Capitol Police are. Well, they're also yeah. pepper spraying us. They're bull spraying us. We got a couple of fights in the front. We got the front pushed forward. And they sprayed us all down with pepper spray. We're not going to stop. We're going to push forward. And they didn't stop. So it's even time stamped and everything. So this is an insane 
archive of everything happening. And so they've even got it marked like the red ones are inside the Capitol. All of this salvage from Parlor, which I hope comes back. I was using, I was manipulating Parlor in order to get more views on my videos and shit. Cause it's really easy to do. Cause right wingers are fucking morons. As evidenced by these fucking videos. <laughs> They've got it all. They've got enough to convict him as long as there's some Republicans that will stand up and do the right thing. Fuck. Breaking news is we're coming on the air. Officer who shot Capitol rioter Ashley Babbitt shouldn't be charged, according to investigators. Miss Babbitt died after being shot by Capitol Police Officer on January the 6th. The officer who shot her had been placed on leave soon after the riot, while Miss Babbitt's death was being investigated, including on the question of whether it was a violation of her civil rights. She was feet away from Congress people. The Justice Department said in announcing the investigation that it was following routine procedure for whatever a police officer you or for whenever a police officer uses deadly force by having the Washington Metropolitan Police Department examine the shooting the police investigators have made an initial determination that charges against the officer aren't warranted adding that the justice department officials haven't yet made a final determination on the matter the U.S. Attorney's Office in Washington is leading the broader investigation. One of the most interesting things that we found out over the weekend about the Capitol riots, which shouldn't surprise anybody, is that multiple people in the riots didn't actually vote. Their, their votes the weren't learn, the stolen. The more delusional this whole thing becomes, uh, my colleagues, uh, Blake Here Ellis and Melanie Hicken, took a look at the 81st people, the first 80 people who were arrested at the Capitol and their voting records, Brianna, and they found out that 10%, eight of them, did not vote in the last election. You want to know who they were? Here's three of them right now. Donovan Crowell, he is the ex-Marine. He's affiliated with Oath Keepers. Uh, he, he registered for vote in 2013. That, but that doesn't surprise ever. me. In fact, the uh, state of Ohio, the county, sent him a note asking uh, for him to respond. They never Those responded, hardcore libertarians. So he was actually removed from the voter rolls. This guy is charged um, in, in the uh, detention of uh, government property and conspiracy, destruction of government property and conspiracy. Jack Griffin is another one. He's 25 years old. He's from Tennessee, uh, charged with violent <laughs> entry. He did he not so vote happy in there. 2020, even though on social media he was posting things like, why God? Why have you forsaken us? Trump still has a plan. Uh, part of that plan <laughs> should have been that he voted for Trump, which he did not. Grayson Courtright, <laughs> University of Kentucky. She didn't is even there. vote for She's him. With entering a restricted building. Oh, this is this West is the Virginia, one that again, didn't know what treason uh, was. Did not vote, Brianna. Did not vote in 2020 for Trump. Uh, on social media, she was bragging about her participation, saying that she can't wait to tell my grandkids I was here, as for being there. Yeah, because people Capitol were calling her treasonous, and she's like, so "What's all that?" These people who actually went to the Capitol uh, to protest and to storm the Capitol, I guess, to show that the vote was unfair to Donald Trump. Turns out they didn't vote at all. <laughs> God damn. It's just fucking embarrassing. And luckily, it's so embarrassing that they are actually leaving the party in droves over it. We have some indication that thousands have changed their voter affiliation since the Capitol riot. Also, exclusive... Dozens of former Bush officials have left the Republican Party 
calling it the Trump cult. These officials, some of whom served in the highest echelons of the Bush administration, said that they had hoped that a Trump defeat would lead party leaders to move on from the former president and denounce his baseless claims that the November presidential election was stolen. But with most Republican lawmakers sticking to Trump, these officials say they no longer recognize the party they served. Some have ended their membership, others are letting it lapse, while a few are newly registered as independents. According to a dozen former Bush officials who spoke to Reuters. The Republican Party, as I knew it, no longer exists. I'd call it the cult of Trump. Yeah. As a conservative, it's getting harder and harder to not look like a kook. You're all fucking kooks. And then, like, the thing is, is Trump is just... He's just laying everything bare. This is who the Republican Party has always been. Trump just says the quiet part out loud. Fuck. But Republicans aren't the only ones moving fast to distance themselves from Trump. Rumors have it that Melania has been told that she needs to move fast and divorce Donald while he still has access to some money. The pair's relationship has come under the spotlight in recent weeks following Donald Trump's election defeat to Joe Biden in November. Rumors have claimed that the couple are in the midst of a marital rift, according to the Daily Star. They say it is likely that Melania's advisors will be urging her to move fast as a divorce could cost Donald an estimated $150 million. It looked like it was in euros or pounds or something, though. That wasn't a dollar sign. Melania could potentially lose cash at her husband's assets uh, as her husband's assets could become tied up and he won't have the cold cash to pay out. An indictment for Melania will be neither cool nor fashionable to her acquired tastes, Mr. Schiff said. Charges against the former president of the United States of America will be the final act in her Trumpian saga that triggers a clear and present danger to their union. <laughs> 